I know where there's some, right here in the hall clerk. No, no, my I have a Here we are back again with the um, Zenith 9021. Um, this is going to be kind of weird, I guess. Different for me. Maybe different for you. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... These videos for the next little while will be two parts. One will be checking in on the, on the uh, progress on the uh, radio itself, the chassis itself. The other will be to continue our discussion of how this works, starting with the front end all the way to sound out these wires right here, speaker wires. <coughs> um, so, so I'm I'm going to I'm going to follow my usual process with this, and everybody's process is different, I suppose. I'll tell you what mine is. Um, mine is to not just power it up, see what happens. Uh, I'm not inclined that way. And occasionally that causes some serious problems. So what I do is I follow this process and I'll, and I'll, uh, and I'll we'll follow this, this process on, on this radio as well as all future radios. Uh, unless I can figure out a good reason not to do that. But uh, I'll, I'll do this and in this order pretty much. I'll check the power transformer, both the primary and secondary, to make sure there are no shorts or opens. And I'll also make note of the uh, impedance of DC impedance of uh, both the primary and the secondary windings. And there are three secondary windings on here. One for B plus, one for um, uh, the rectifier itself, five, five something volts, and then the 6.3 for the for the other odds and ends like lamps and heaters and so on. Uh, once I'm done with that, I'll check the audio transformer uh, for exactly the same reasons and take the same kind of notes. I'll check the on-off switch, which is really <laughs> kind of easy, uh, but. <laughs> I've been surprised. I've, I've done everything and expected a radio to work and uh, come to find out I hadn't checked the on-off switch. And all you do is put an ohmmeter across these two, these two pins on the, uh, on the cord, presuming it's a good cord, this one is. Turn the on-off switch on and off and you should get a very low impedance and infinity. Um, that's as easy as it gets, but that'll tell me whether the radio will actually turn on. Then I'll do all the other transformers, and there are a lot of them. Well, not a lot. There's one in here, two in here, two in here, two in here for the uh, for the IF and RF cans. Uh, a bunch of uh, there's a there's a an antenna loading coil right there that'll uh, have to be checked out, and there are others on the underside over here in the. Uh, where the gang switch is for the um, for the band selector. And remember, this has three bands broadcast: old-fashioned pre-war FM and post-war FM. And there might be a few others scattered about, but I'll check those chokes. I'll measure all the resistors, um, and I know I'll pull this candom because those are notoriously unreliable. So I'll pull that guy out and replace it. Um, and you'll notice I haven't mentioned caps yet. That's a whole operation um, that I know, I know looking at it, what I'm going to do already. You probably do too. But I'll check all the resistors in place, make sure they're all, you know, within tolerance or close to it. Um, and then I'll get to the capacitors. I've got uh, two... Uh, where to go? Two uh, multi-unit electrolytics right here that need to be restuffed, and then a bevy a flock. Um, if there were crows, I'd call them a murder. <laughs> 
of uh, waxy electrolytics. All these guys, and there must be a dozen at least, have to be replaced. So why do I do that? Well, I do that because I know that work has to be done. If, if my goal was to just get it to operate and make some noise and pick up uh, a local station um, and then put it back on the shelf and never, never use it again, that would be one thing. That's not my goal. My goal is to restore this to as good a condition as I possibly can. Um, um, and I know that in order to do that, to accomplish that, I have to go through all those steps. I can't shortcut any of them. Um, oh, by the way, here's the audio transformer. Um, so I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do that. And the uh, last thing I'll do once I've got everything cleaned up and ready to go is I'll add a fuse uh, and uh, if necessary, an X or Y uh, capacitor across the, uh, the power lines. Um, so that's that's my that's my goal. And while I'm working on the the explanation of how the circuit works, I'll be doing that. You do not need to see yet one more video of some guy clipping out capacitors and and uh, putting new ones in. It's just uh, it's been done. It's been done to death. And uh, I'm not interested in in uh, videotaping myself doing that over and over and over again. So I'll do all of this, all of this work, all of this, take, take my, all my steps before I power it up um, behind the scenes. I won't video any of it unless I run across something interesting. One thing that is, might be interesting in here is somewhere in here is supposed to be a shielded capacitor. I haven't spotted it yet, but it's supposed to be, according to the parts list, there's one in here. And uh, we'll have to do something interesting around that. And I know that I've seen other videos on YouTube about how that works. So that's it for this video for the chassis work. Uh, next, we'll uh, turn our attention to uh, the circuit. I went through the block diagram last video. This, this time, we'll take a look at um, getting uh, radio signals into the radio, into the first stage of the radio into the RF amplifier and see how that works. Uh, so back to the uh, chalkboard, as it were. If all you wanted to do is catch up with this, you're caught up. Uh, if you want to follow us along with um, uh, the actual functioning of the radio, uh, stick with us on this video. Here's the complete schematic for the uh, 9E21. And let's just see if we can pick out the basic elements of any superheterodyne receiver. Um, there will be a local oscillator for the broadcast. Well, first of all, there's an antenna, of course. But a local oscillator for the uh, broadcast band, which is right in this area. Uh, there may or may not be an RF amplifier, typically not for an All-American 5. Uh, amplifier, but there will be a converter, and the converter is what converts the uh, the carrier frequency of the broadcasting station you're interested in, converts that to our intermediate frequency of, in this case, 455 kilohertz. So we've got a converter. Uh, the second thing that that um, superhets have is uh, an IF amplifier, at least one stage, and we've got that right here. There's our one stage VIF amplifier. And then we have what's called a discriminator or a discriminator, discriminator detector in this case, and that's this 6T8 here uh, that converts our, I, our intermediate frequency, strips away the carrier, the intermediate frequency carrier, leaving only the audio, which is then passed to an output stage, 6V6 in this case. So we have all of the elements of a standard AM um, middle wave broadcast receiver right here. So let's follow through. This one has a few extra bits and pieces, uh, but let's follow through what happens when an uh, RF uh, signal reaches the antenna. Uh, let me zoom in here.
to this upper left chunk right here. Uh, that much out to do us. Okay. What we've got in this radio is an AM antenna connector. Uh, there are certain versions. There's a there's a loop antenna up here, which um, it looks like the 9H882 only had a built-in loop antenna. Um, this particular chassis was built to have a long wire, and uh, that's where that connects. Long wire to here, ground down to here, chassis ground. Um, so we've got an antenna hanging out in the air somewhere, picking up all kinds of RF, all, all, almost all wavelengths, a whole bunch of them at least, <coughs> on the long wire. Now let's talk about long wires just for a second. If you tune into the middle of the uh, AM band, we're around a thousand. If you if you tune into a thousand, which is a one megahertz. Um, 1000 kilohertz. Um, the ideal antenna for that would be the length of one wavelength of a 1000 hertz signal. And the length of one wavelength of a 1000 hertz signal is 983.571 feet. That's a 1000 foot uh, radio antenna in an ideal world. Fortunately, because, <laughs> or unfortunately, that's not really necessary. Uh, most antennas, most designed antennas, long wire antennas, are either half the wavelength of the uh, antenna or a quarter of the wavelength. They can also be an eighth uh, or a sixteenth. So a half, you know, Given that a full wavelength is about a thousand feet, a half wavelength antenna would be 500, a quarter wave would be 250. That's just a lot of wire to have hanging out in the breeze. So there's a way to put a shorter long lead on here and have it behave like a longer one. And that's by uh, this coil right here. That coil L2 uh, serves two purposes. The first we want to talk about is it serves as an antenna loading coil. A wire that's shorter than 500 or 250 feet um, can uh, be compensated for by adding a loading coil uh, at the uh, in serial with the with the uh, in series rather with the uh, antenna. So we've got broadcast waves hitting the wire coming in here, going through that capacitor, uh, which uh, isolates the, the radio from any, oh, I don't know, if your power line fell on your antenna, you wouldn't be driving a bunch of power through here. So that isolates it so that only, only AC can get through there, not DC. Um, and then through the, uh, the loading coil, which, gives the radio the impression that it has a, a quarter wave or half wave antenna hit sitting out there even though it might not. So we've got RF coming in, it's modulated, it's uh, all the bandwidths that this radio can pick up plus a bunch more on either side of above and below that fr those frequencies. Then it hits this network right here of uh, parallel capacitors and the, <coughs> pardon me, and this is a band pass filter. Let me put up a diagram of what a band pass filter does, but it's kind of obvious. You really don't want to spend a bunch of energy amplifying in, a, in the next stage uh, a whole, all of the radio frequencies. You only want to amplify the one you're interested in. So you put a band pass filter right here, which works in conjunction with this antenna loading uh, coil to create a band pass filter. Now C1 right here is ganged with uh, it's the it's the tuning gang on top of the receiver. There's another element of, he, of it here, and this is inside the detector coil. Then there's another element of it here, which is inside the local oscillator. So those three capacitors are ganged together 
<clears throat> and the purpose of this gang, this first section of the, of the tuning capacitor, is to filter out everything, all the radio, except the one frequency that you want. So in our case, if we wanted a thousand mega or a thousand kilohertz, uh, one thousand on the dial, and there was a radio station there we wanted to pick up. This would let us filter out all the radio stations to either side, above and below the thousand, the thousand hertz, kilohertz. Um, so now we've got a filtered RF stream coming down through into this switch around here, oops, right, up here, then straight up and into the grid of our RF amplifier. So we have AM, all the frequencies coming in here. We filter out all but the one we want. We pass that through this rotary switch uh, and up uh, into the grid of the uh, 6BA6 the RF amplifier, which is right there, that grid. Uh, these tubes, by the way, are drawn for me. They're drawn upside down. It says a cathode on the top, plate on the bottom. They're all that way. This one is even weirder, but we'll ignore that for a moment. Uh, so the 6B6 amplifies the RF signal. Comes out the plate right here. Um, then goes through this half of a transformer. Then this transformer, this choke actually, this is a choke, through a resistor and through this coil and makes its way over here. So now we have a, um, a transformer. We, we, we're going through two transformers. We're going through the first, or the FM detector transformer. Then we're getting to the broadcast detector. We'll ignore the FM detector coil. It just In this case, it just adds like another, X like another choke in the line. This is the transformer we're interested in. This is the one where our amplified RF signal is transformed, is uh, inductively coupled to the other side of this transformer. And you'll notice there are more windings on the secondary side than there are on the primary side. What that does for you is gives you a touch of amplification. So you've got a, it's a step up transformer. It's transform, it's amplifying the RF signal a bit. And um, once we've got it on this side, then the RF goes up through here, up here, over here, up through this switch, and over here to the grid of the converter. All right, so at this converter grid, we've got, again using our example, 1000 kilohertz. Our, uh, RF that's being modulated by our favorite radio station on a thousand kilohertz. So what do we need to do now? We need to convert that 1000 kilohertz carrier wave into 455 kilohertz for our IF stages. So we do that by starting down here with our broadcast coil oscillator. Now remember that this C1 on the broadcast coil oscillator is coupled to the uh, C1 in the um, the uh, our um, our bandpass filter. So if you tune this one, you're tuning this one as well. This oscillator is set. <coughs> pardon me, is designed to oscillate at uh, 455,000 hertz above the received uh, RF frequency, the R uh, radio station's carrier frequency. So in this case, we've got a thousand hertz coming in in here, through here, up to our uh, RF amplifier. We Meanwhile, we've got our, our broadcast um, oscillator oscillating at 1000 plus 455 or 1.455 megahertz. So we've got a 1.455 megahertz 
uh, signal coming from the oscillator right here. And that, let me highlight that. Come on here. We can do it. I want to include that. That output is routed through, um, let's see if I got this right. Yeah. That output is routed through, boy, my fingers aren't working today. Through this R7, through this switch, up here, over here, whoops, jaggedy line. Then up through here, through here, down here, and into another grid on the 6BE6. So at this point, we've got our original um, 1000 kilohertz signal coming into this grid. We have our uh, 1.455 megahertz signal coming into this grid. And out the plate comes uh, four signals. Comes the original 1000 kilohertz, uh, comes the one fed into this grid, the 1,455 kilohertz, comes the difference, which is 455 kilohertz, and the sum of those, which is 2.5, 2.455 megahertz. But what we're interested in getting out of the plate right here is the 455 kilohertz, because then we've got uh, the same frequency signal that we can pass through these IF cans and amplify uh, without changing the design of these guys almost one iota. They're almost identical in, in their amplification. So we have our, our sought after uh, intermediate frequency signal coming right off this plate and making its way down through this FM coil around here and through this AM coil and on around the world. Um, inductively coupled through here, up through to the grid of the first IF amplifier. Out that guy makes the same kind of journey again. Out this way. Oop, through the center tap, sorry. And does the same thing again. Through that gig, gets amplified again, and out, and one more time. Through there. Through, oops. Through this one. Can't seem to draw it. And so on. So what we've got here is an AM radio. We've got RF, we've got our station come all our stations coming in. We filter out the one we want. We, in this case, we uh, amplify it with an am RF amplification stage. We um, pass it on inductively to the next to the next stage, which is our converter. We uh, generate an oscillator. We generate a uh, a um, 455 kilohertz plus the um, the, uh, the station in question's frequency in our local oscillator. Come up here, blend those two, create a 455 kilohertz intermediate frequency, pass it through these guys, through these guys, and through these guys, and on, on down the tracks. Uh, the next stage is a detector. We'll do that in a second. But as you can see, it's outside of all the sprawl and splatter of all the other stuff and the addition of, of these sets of uh, FM only um, intermediate stage transformers. It's a relatively simple, relatively simple uh, AM radio. It works just like every other super heterodyne AM radio. The only difference in this case is it has an RF amplifier and in this case it has two stages 
of IF amplification, not all radios do. Um, so that's how this first, these first four sections of the radio work. Let's take a look next at um, what comes after. What's the next thing that happens in this? Uh, this uh, we've now got our 455 kilohertz intermediate frequency being modulated by our favorite 1,000 kilohertz uh, radio station. So what comes next? On the right side of the schematic is the rest of the circuitry. Um, we've got the uh, 455 kilohertz output from the second IF stage going through the the uh, primaries of both the FM and AM transformers, FM here, AM here, but we're ignoring the FM. Oops. Uh, so now we've got on this side, on the secondary side of the AM, we've got, ooh, what's going on? Come on, work with me here. There we go. We've got uh, our 455 inductively coupled to the other side of the transformer, which goes up here. And into, this is a triple uh, diode tube, the 6T8 discriminator detector and first audio amplifier, which is a mouthful. Um, but we've got, now we've got 455 coming in here, carrying our audio, goes into this guy, up to that plate. Um, there's the cathode, plate cathode of a diode pair. Um, the, uh, now we've got a plain audio, we've stripped away, the diode has stripped away the, uh, the, um, the bulk of the 455, all we're left with is, for the most part, the, the audio signal itself. Comes off the plate over here, down here, through this cap, which finally erases the rest of the 455, if there's any left, into the grid of the 6V6. And there it gets amplified through the 6V6 power amplifier, out the plate, and down here into the primary of our audio transformer. Uh, the audio transformer converts all the high voltage that's on here to low voltage, very high current on the secondary. Uh, notice the, the resistance differences. The primary is 600 ohms, the secondary is 0.5 ohms, uh, which, which performs that act of magic. Um, our audio signal runs through here through the, the voice coil of the speaker, and wonderful sound comes out here. What is this? Um, and that's it. We've got some other stuff going on right here. Uh, you'll notice that all this stuff is attached to the grid of the, or one of the grids of the uh, 68. This is all of our tone control switch switching resistors and capacitors in and out of the circuit to pump up bass or lower bass. Uh, there's a voice setting, treble, uh, normal, whatever normal means, alto, all of this stuff. And our uh, volume control is right here. So all that stuff controls how the sound is passed from the cathode, and this from the, uh, yeah, from the, um, through the diode to the plate. Uh, so the tone control stuff is applied within this tube. Uh, what else do I want to say about this? That's, that's in essence what's happening in this, in this radio. There are some fine points here and there, um, but none that need concern us. Um, this also kind of shows why I don't bother turning on a radio. I can take my ohm meter and check these values on every transformer in here, which I've done in this one, and they're all good, by the way, and know whether it's going to play or not. I know whether every stage is likely to work. I haven't tested the tubes, not, not going to until it's kind of last. Um, 
I'm checking the uh, resistors because these are mostly carbon composition resistors. They mostly creep up like crazy. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to say about um, resistors. Let's look at this guy right here. R25 appears to be 150 megohms. It's not. It's 150K, plus or minus 10%. For a while, they were using that M to indicate K. When they meant meg ohm, they would put it, there's one, uh, they would say meg, like right here. So don't be fooled by that. If you're going through here and checking resistors and you say, this is supposed to be 150 meg ohms and it's only 160 K, it's wrong. No, it's okay. <laughs> it's just that that M stands for a thousand. It doesn't stand for uh, a million. If they mean a million, they put meg. Um, so it's just something to be aware of in certain schematics. I think Zenith stopped, or this is a writer schematic actually, um, they stopped doing that after a while and started putting just the K. If they used it already with a 455 kilohertz, the K was there, meaning a thousand hertz, uh, why they chose to use M, although a mille in um, Italian or something uh, means a thousand. So it makes some sense. Just be aware that if it says 150M, it's 150K. Uh, slight translation required on your part. Okay, that does it for this one. We follow the signal path of the, uh, oh, you'll, one other thing I wanted to say is you'll notice we didn't talk about this guy at all, the 6AU6 limiter. And that's because it's only used in the FM section. And uh, we'll follow, we'll talk about FM uh, next video. So um, we've got our aim laid out. We know where the signal's going and how it's getting from point A to point B. Uh, next, we'll talk about uh, the FM sections. There are two, old pre-war and post-war. So we'll talk about that. In the meantime, take care of yourself. Be safe. See you next time.